Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a bit since I've recorded a review. This is the busy time of year. I'm getting ready for SHOT Show. And then I have EWA over in Germany and NRA all within the first four months of next year. So getting ready for show season and then being gone during that season is just gonna be crazy. So haven't had a lot of time with that and the holidays to do any reviews, but I wanted to talk about this today, the Q Fix or the Fix by Q, which is a gun that I've had for about two years. <laughs> Uh, so disclaimer, I actually purchased this gun, sort of. It was actually a trade for a truck that I did a while back. Um, I like trading guns for things and things for guns. And uh, one of the guns in that trade was this Q, the Fix, or the Fix by Q in 6.5 Creedmoor. And it's a gun that I've had for two and a half years now. And I've wanted to do a review on it, but I've, I've put it off because I wanted to get enough rounds down through it to really decide what it was I liked and what it was that I didn't like about it. And since it's 6.5 Creedmoor and a bolt gun, it's not something that you just go out to the range and hammer through, you know, hundreds and thousands of rounds through it. Um, it takes a little bit of time to figure out what it is that you like and what it is that you don't like. So here we are two and a half years of ownership into the Fix by Q and I will give you my honest opinion on it. And we are going to start from the back of the gun. Also, if it looks familiar because SIG knocked it off with their cross rifle, um, that's because SIG knocked it off with the cross rifle. Now, the thing is uh, SIG being SIG, that rifle has had recalls. Now, that's not saying that Q doesn't have recalls. They did have a trigger issue at one point and I believe a bolt assembly as well. So. Everybody's susceptible to recalls. Q is no different, um, but the way that they fix it is really um, what's gonna make a company you know, good in the long run. So starting with the back, it has this fully adjustable stock, which is foldable. And I always forget whether I have to push it up or down, and it is down. Hang on, let me see, up or down? There we go, yep, down. So people have said that's difficult. Other people have said it's not. For me, I forget which way to push it each time and I have to fiddle around with it. But it is nice that this folds uh, into a compact-ish package because this is what you would consider kind of a uh, do-all rifle. It's not really a long range gun or a super lightweight gun. It's in that middle of, if you're gonna be you know, humping a gun around, you want something lighter weight. It's nice to have this folding stock. It has cheek weld adjustments, it has butt pad adjustments. It even has a, a QD slot here for your sling. And it's pretty cool, the overall design of it. Now this butt pad is not very comfortable, but like I said before, this is not a gun that you're gonna be shooting thousands and thousands of rounds through. It's 6.5 Creedmoor in a stainless steel barrel. The barrel is going to wear out before you go through thousands and thousands of rounds. It is a gun that you're going to zero and then bring it out and shoot it when you need it. So the butt pad adjustment and comfort is not really that big a deal to me, but it is nice that you can move it up and down easily and uh, get your cheek weld exactly where you want it. Moving forward, the action is very, very smooth. However, after you pull the trigger, it is a little bit tighter. Someone explains in another video exactly why that is, but it is smooth. However, you do need to make sure that you pull the bolt all the way back. Make sure that you've hit the stop before trying to chamber another round. Otherwise, it won't pick up off the magazine, which is an issue I've had a few times. Uh, it does have an ambidextrous, looks like a Radian Raptor, or I'm sorry, the Radian uh, Ambi Safety. It could be Q-Zone, but gosh, it sure looks like a Radian. Um, and it is a 45 degree safety, which is nice for uh, being able to get your thumb over and get those nice long range shots. So safety, that's a definite plus. So the trigger is a two stage trigger made by Q and it has a very nice first stage that's just nothing. And then once you get up on that wall, it is a 
two pound, very easy break. This trigger, as far as um, you know, long range shooting makes it very easy to make shots because that trigger is very, very consistent. So you always know where it's gonna break. So it does come with one 10 round SR25 mag. It will work with the 20s as well. Um, and I've heard there are some other mags that do work with it. However, if you put any type of pressure on the magazine while you're trying to seat a new round, I have had issues where it does not wanna pick the round up. So I would not use 20 round mags. I'd stick with the 10 rounders. Um, because you don't want that sitting on the ground and causing issues chambering a new round. Now this gun is lightweight, it's like six and a half pounds. Once you add everything onto it, you're gonna be talking about a 12 pound gun for certain. Uh, one of the nice things that they did is this continuous uh, top rail that goes all the way to the front, getting more to the front of the gun and the, the actual front rail here. This is where the gun definitely falls apart for me because this does, it, because this may look like seven-sided M-Lock, but it's not. It's five-sided, not M-Lock. It's Q's own uh, rail system called Q-Cert, okay? And I really wish they had just put M-Lock on here, seven-sided M-Lock. They do it on the Honey Badger. They do it on the Sugar Weasel. M-Lock would have worked fine. I think that this was sometimes what companies do, a solution in search of a problem. They were looking for a very rigid way to mount things to a rail um, to help maintain zero, I suppose. But what they did is they just ended up making the gun much more complicated and expensive than it needs to be because there are no really Q-cert um, you know, accessories out there. You'd have to put an M-lock adapter on it or like they include in the box, a Picatinny adapter for up front if you want to mount a bipod to it, which obviously you're gonna wanna do. So all the weight savings and potential strength, you have to put an adapter on. Does it make sense? I'd rather see it just be seven-sided or five-sided M-lock or just M-lock on the bottom and you know no pick on top. I don't really care, but the Q-cert definitely does not do it for me. So now this Q-cert rail does house the 16-inch stainless steel barrel. 16 inches may seem like a lot in the rifle world if you're coming from 223 or 556, it isn't. Um, but in the 308 and 65 Creedmoor world, that is definitely a shorter barrel. So accuracy is pretty good. I'll say it's exactly what you need it to be. Um, I, I'll show a photo of the accuracy I got with some, I believe it was Hornady deer hunting ammo. So not like the most accurate stuff. I only had 80 yards to be able to test. So it's probably shooting at 1.2 to 1.4 MOA with that ammo and me behind the trigger which for me is perfectly acceptable. I do have a 22 inch barrel and a 6.5 Creedmoor that I built that does get better groupings at the same distance with the same ammo. Um, but then again, that's a 22 inch barrel on a gun that weighs five times as much as this does. Um, now on the front of the gun, it's normally going to come with a cherry bomb, which sucks, okay? I understand the idea behind it because it's how you thread on your you know, Trash Panda or Thunder Chicken, which I have. I didn't have those at the time when I got the gun. So I messaged Q and said, hey, I wanna put a Dead Air Nomad 30 because there's a 30 cal can that I wanted to use on it. And they gave me a real ugly response and said, don't do that, that's garbage. And I said, okay, fine, figure out how to do it. Um, took the, the uh, cherry bomb off because it's obnoxiously loud, sends concussion everywhere and just completely sucks to shoot without a can on. You have to have a taper adapter which takes the taper, makes a nice flat shoulder. And then I put, oh, there we go. There's a problem I'll talk about in a second. And then I put a uh, muzzle brake on here for my chemo adapter. And then I have a Nomad 30 on the front with the chemo adapter. And I should do a whole video on this because the Nomad 30 is just scooting right off the chemo adapter and the chemo adapter is not unlocking. So. If I had to do it all over again, I'd keep the stupid cherry bomb on it and then just use the uh, thunder chicken I have or take the cherry bomb off of it, put this shoulder adapter on and just direct thread a Nomad 30 or whatever can I have because Nomad 30 with chemo adapter is a no go. I'll do a whole nother video on that in general. So overall thoughts at the price that this comes in at, which I believe is right around 3,200 bucks. Is it worth it? Once again, that's just really up to you um, to have a lightweight general purpose rifle that's, you know, plenty accurate out to, God, I mean, probably five, 600 yards. I've only shot out to 300 yards. I had no problem hitting 12 inch steel.
prone over and over again. Um, there's tons of energy coming out of that round still at 300 yards. So that's probably the maximum distance I would be comfortable making a deer shot or any animal shot anyway. So it's acceptable for what it is. Um, pricing wise, if you want to have a really cool looking gun, you could go with this. If you want one that probably is, you know, still in beta mode, you could get the SIG Cross. But there's a lot of other options out there for quite a bit less money, but they're not as cool as in my opinion, as the uh, the fix by Q. So short review, get one, don't get one. I just hope this helps you uh, make your decision.